MMX here trying to take a look at trying to figure out what's going on with Lordstown Motors and Foxconn in this breach. Alright, so what we have is Foxconn has claimed that Lordstown Motors is in breach of their agreement to fund a MIH program for a hundred million dollars and also provide some additional funding to Lordstown Motors. This is because the stock price of Lordstown Motors has dropped below a dollar for a significant amount of time uh, and it has received a delisting notice from NASDAQ. That symbol is R-I-D-E. I just wanted to go over um, a framework of this is just my opinion. I'm not an attorney, a, a financial advisor, or engineer. Please do your own DD. This is not a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold any stock. Let me just go through um, my framework uh, for looking at this development. The best case scenario. Uh, this is a prophylactic legal move by Fox to protect investments in Lex. This is a technical filing to be first and set the groundwork for negotiations. In other words, uh, a trigger was tripped. Uh, the, the board in Taiwan said, uh, okay, we are going to um, file this case irregardless of um, what is happening or what will happen. And this just may be a mile marker that they have set. And again, this is a prophylactic legal move by Fox to protect investments in LEX. In other words, there's no malice here. There's, there's no ill intent. It's simply a legal move to put a stake in the ground, make a claim <clears throat> regarding their uh, investments. This is certainly a possibility. If you wanted to take a look at this not being adversarial or... Uh, the worst case scenario, that would be one way to look at it. Uh, now, if you wanted to look at it as an adversarial <clears throat> takeover, this could be a backdoor takeover of Lord Sun Motors' assets. Uh, it is possible that this is a nuclear option to quickly take over uh, Lord Sun Motors' IP and other, uh, other assets. Um, this is a blatant takeover of Lord Sun Motors after a, a, a court battle. So, in, in this way of looking at uh, this issue, you could say a, a trap was set and that trap was sprung. And the goal uh, of this whole exercise was to take over the assets eventually of Lordstown Motors. I'm not an attorney. This would imply bad faith, I believe. And I believe that Lordstown Motors has mentioned bad faith. Is this a possible? Uh, is this a possibility? Yes, it is. Uh, the third possibility I have here is a belt and suspenders move. Fox is covering all the bases in case of the reverse split and new stock votes fail. Um, so in other words, this is a prudent business move to protect their investments. And they're looking at the delisting and the inability of Lordstown to raise capital. Uh, and they're just simply making a prudent business move um, so you can there's many gradations between these three positions uh, but there are three possible uh, outcomes again if this is a negotiation uh, if they are going to renegotiate they're, they're both going to start with really strong uh, positions and then work backwards from there so it's hard to know I would say that you know, let's let's split these evenly. You know, 33% chance of either one of these uh, being the case right now as far as what's going on. Anyway, that would be my case. So it's equal, equal parts of every one of those options. Uh, where Lordstown Motors is right now. Lordstown Motors has a competitive vehicle in the BV market with a high probability of success. This is in my opinion. I'm not an expert again. Uh, it's got a high prob probability of success, especially in the underserved BEV market, uh, the fleet market. I mean, uh, this is the perfect product at the perfect time. 
in my opinion, the endurance is also a competitive and allured, uh, alluring mass market, mid market consumer BEV pickup truck. I want to tell you, after I ran my uh, photo essay on the endurance just recently, uh, there were several uh, comments and other uh, contacts made of where this truck could be purchased. So I do think that there is definitely, undoubtedly, demand for this vehicle. There's, there's just, uh, in my mind, in my opinion, um, this is a truth, a fact. Um, this is a finished vehicle for sale right now. So in other words, this is not a production. This is not a beta. This is, this is a homologated, certified commercial vehicle. Uh, it's done. Uh, a production ramp is all that's needed for mass marketing of this vehicle. That's it. They have to get the production dies and start stamping and putting the trucks together. That's it. Um, minor technical issues are constantly being resolved on an ongoing basis, and they are perfecting the first mass market production hub motor BEV drivetrain. So in other words, uh, yes, there are some fluctuations in the range and some other things. These are software issues, okay, in my opinion, not an engineer, okay, and minor hardware issues such as the uh, connectors and so on for, and so forth and components that can be re replaced and uh, respecified. So I do not believe there are any overwhelming uh, technical issues of any kind to keep this truck from going into mass production. I think funding is the only barrier uh, to this being a mass market vehicle, in my opinion. So uh, there is a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow here, whoever ends up with it and has the money to ramp it. Um, let's just move on here. In my opinion, there is evidence of stock price manipulation to effectively get ride delisted at a critical point in time. Okay, I think, I mean, you can look at my videos, come to your own conclusion. That is my opinion. Um, the delisting notice is what Fox is responding to. Okay, so that's basically where we are right now. What are the outcomes? Uh, one outcome is Fox effectively does a hostile takeover of Lordstown Motors. As with the sale of the plant, I, I, would they actually do this? I mean, they actually have some intent, unless this is just a negotiating position uh, that they're filing uh, this breach notice on. Um, let me just move over with this. Uh, Fox damages the con uh, contract design and manufacturing, manufacturing service model. Uh, with this would be the cannibal cannibalization of the first product of their first production partner. Okay, you know, uh, would they actually do this? I mean, uh, wouldn't you think twice if you're going to? Well, let's have uh, let's have uh, Foxconn manufacture our vehicle. Oh, wait a minute. If there's some financial problems, we're at risk of what? What is you know a takeover or damaging damaging our company or you know it would seem to me that it would be in their best interest to negotiate a solution to this. But that is just my opinion. I have no way of reading the minds of of what these individuals are thinking, and the output of information is very limited. So do your own DG, DD, and this is not advice. Make your own conclusions. I just want to note that Rivian may have just gone with Magnus over Fox. They're contacting Magnus about doing, I think, some contract manufacturing. And as I said in that Bloomberg podcast, they were talking to Foxconn. So, you know, has Foxconn already damaged uh, their reputation? You know, they want to be a trusted partner. Uh, so, and, you know, the CEO has used those specific, let us be your trusted partner in manufacturing. 
Well, um, you can take a look at this in its entirety. And uh, to my mind, there's a conflict there. So that, that the, you know, the outcome may be a hostile takeover of Lord Sun Motors or... Uh, the alternative to that would uh, Foxconn and Lordstown negotiate a new agreement and move forward. Uh, and I guess those terms would have to be agreed to. There would have to be a reverse split and so forth. But um, I think that this, as one of the commenters in one of my videos said, this this whole, the, the endurance is at a tipping point. It is... 99% there, 99.9% uh, .9 there, um, so I think it would behoove both parties to negotiate a, a new agreement, um, whether this will happen, I have no way of knowing, I am not suggesting that I have any information that this will happen, but I think that would be the best possible outcome, but I am not an attorney. This is not legal advice. In my opinion, legal cases, and this has turned into a legal matter, turn on the facts. Contract particulars, what was agreed to, what is in black and white, okay? This is what matters uh, in court. So you must do your own DD on this. You must look at SEC filings and other available information and find out what are these terms that were agreed to. I am not a financial advisor. I am not qualified to do this analysis. I may attempt a look at it, but it is up to you as a stockholder or an investor or an interested party to do this on your own but i think that is also key here now i just want to go over a couple factors now the the timing of all these events is uncanny it speaks i am putting my tinfoil hat on here it speaks to a conspiracy i'm sorry <laughs> i just it's 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 getting a little too obvious here in my opinion, it is important to note that Hindenburg has just today, following this breach and delisting announcement, so, you know, strike one, attack one, attack two, attack three, Hindenburg has just today announced a short attack on Icon Enterprises. Now, Icon, Carl Icon, was a potential white knight for Lordstown. The chairman of the board at Lordstown, um was uh, a former capo for Carl Icahn. And, uh, you know, Icahn may have just been at the point where he said, well, now this, this is a viable product. You know, I'm going to invest. I have no information on that. I am speculating. But I'm just saying it's uncanny that there is a Hindenburg attack right at this particular moment on the potential white knight for Lordstown, and that there was also a Hindenburg attack on Lordstown Motors. And I would like to just tell everybody that, you know, Hindenburg hasn't, it, it's not this long lasting firm. It went into existence in uh, 2017. I don't think they did anything till 2019. So they're, they're a new firm. And here's the thing about Hindenburg. They are not, what Hindenburg does is short stocks. And not only do they short stocks, they sell their reports on the stocks they're going to short to their subscribers before they publish the reports. And this is how they make money. Um, they're not Batman out there trying to save the retail investor. They're in this to make money, and they get subscription. And, and in other words, they do a report. They call up whoever the investment bank is and say, hey, I got a report coming out. Uh, you know, you're one of my subscribers for uh, 10 million a year. I'm going to send it to you. XYZ stock is going to be, we're going to put out this massive uh, press barrage and we're going to tell how crappy this stock is tomorrow. So here's the report. Get your ducks in a row. This is, this is in my estimation uh market manipulation 
I mean, I don't know what the, the, now the SEC and the DOJ ha, is investigating these firms. That doesn't imply there's guilt. However, you know, some of these firms, they've gone in and, you know, raided, taken documents out of safes and everything. Why they're dragging their feet on this? Uh, I don't know. But it, I think it's uncanny that right when this happens, when Icon Enterprises could have swooped in, potentially, I don't even know. I'm not a financial advisor. I don't know if this is true. However, the timing is uncanny uh, that there's a Hindenburg attack right at this moment. Uh, in my in, in my opinion, it's also important to note that BlackRock, which you can watch my videos on the subject of BlackRock, has political tie, political ties to the president administration. And again, the timing to all of this, if and I'm not going to, this is not a political channel, but do your own DD and come to your own conclusions on what the political aspects of the timing of all this is. Uh, and I'm just going to finalize this by saying, in any case, no effort has been spared to keep the endurance BV off the market. And it would seem with explicit timing. Um, so, I guess to sum this up, uh, I would say that, um, you know, the, the, the best case scenario for the parties involved is to negotiate a new deal. Uh, but will that happen? We don't know. I hope you like this video. These are my thoughts. I'm not an engineer, attorney, financial advisor, or accountant. These are my own opinions. Please do your own DD and satisfy any, uh, anything I've said here. You, you know, verify it to your own satisfaction. And this is not... Uh, an effort to get you to buy, sell, or hold any stocks. This is MXUX. Good luck in the market.